Hello everyone. Today I'm going to start a new series on semantic kernels. So this is again a very hot topic these days which was released a few months back and if you are not sure what the semantic kernel is, let's understand it in a simple verse. So using semantic kernel, you can use your regular programming language and can inject prompts in it. So basically, if you want to enable your application with some AI capabilities, then semantic kernel is there for your rescue. So you need not to write your existing application again based on the AI models you are using. Rather, we will be using uh, the same application and we will be injecting our AI models or AI services to it. So let's see how we can utilize the semantic kernel. And in this series, I have planned to create around 15 to 17 videos because I have a lot many topics in mind. And I would request you to let me know in comments what all specific topics you are looking for so that it would be easy for me to shuffle my list here and there. Having said that, let's continue with it and understand what this semantic kernel is. So SK is short for semantic kernel and it is a very lightweight open source SDK. And the same, uh, this is the same, uh, exactly the same copilot stack that Microsoft uses for its own products like Microsoft 365 copilot or Windows copilot or even the Bing. So there is nothing much change what is there and what they are using it. So it's exactly the same. That's why I'm saying. And another thing here is it makes the prompt engineering very easy. So you can write very complex prompt in a very fast way or a very easy way. So let's say you just want to say you want to connect, connect me to this. So what will you do is you will just say connect this for me and it will go ahead and connect that for you. So you need not to think about how to connect those individual systems. So even let's say you want to switch on or off the bulb. So in that case, there are a lot many services and components will come into the picture. But if you are going with semantic kernel, then your life would be very easy because everything is very much structured and can e easily be integrated into your existing code. And the third point, fourth point I'm saying here is, like I said, it quickly integrates with the existing app. So you have an application in some native language and you want to enable AI capabilities, then SK will be there to help you. It will help you inject prompts into your existing applications very easily. So, and who uh, is this for? So definitely software developer is the one who is going to use it. And if you will look at the figure, which I have created over here. So in this diagram, I can see that uh, uh, the code, native code is written in C-sharp, Java, and Python. And now you want to integrate your AI models to that. So semantic kernel is the one which is going to uh, like act as a bridge between these two things. So whatever code you have written, semantic kernel will take care of those integration and the plugin parts and will just make your systems work with AI capabilities. Now, why should we use semantic kernel when we have a lot many systems? We have like chat GPT kind of system, then why do we want to use it? So let me give you an example. Let's say you want to write a book and if you're using chat GPT, you will just say write a book on so and so topic. So it may possible that chat GPT will give you few pages, but it is not very much possible that it will give you the complete book or it will write a full book for you. So those are the kind of scenarios uh, we can implement very easily with semantic kernel. And the, if you will read these three bullet points, which I have mentioned over here. So the first one I'm saying here is easily adds existing code to AI agents. So one of the foremost reasons why we use semantic kernel is it is, it allows us to easily add uh, existing code to the AI agents with plugins. So using plugin, our agent can interact with our real world by calling our existing app, which we have already written some time back. And second thing here saying, I'm saying is it helps in creating fully automated agents. So we all know that today AI models can generate text as well as images, but they alone are not sufficient to create an end-to-end -end application or end-to-end -end agent. So that's where we have SK for rescue and using semantic kernel, uh, we can bridge this gap and we need, we don't need anyone in between to read those messages and gives next command to the next uh, 
chain llm chain which we are using so it will just pull in everything and keep it at one place and the, another reason to use uh, sk is so sk's interface allows you to flexibly integrate any AI service with the use of connectors so using connectors and plugin we can easily switch between various models so let's say today you are building using open ai and tomorrow suddenly you decided to move on to azure open ai so this kind of switching is very very flexible and very easy if you are going with semantic kernel so these are the main components so this particular video is kind of uh, theoretical because it's more mostly around why what and what exactly this thing is but going forward in my next video definitely you will find some code and how to set up the system so let's continue with this slide wherein i want to talk about what are the major components of semantic kernel the very first one is the kernel and do note that it's not necessary or mandatory that you use all the components but it is always good to know or get yourself aware about what all these components are definitely you may need two or three at a time but let's it's good to know about all of these so the very first one is the kernel so kernel is the heart where we register all our connectors plugins configure our settings we will provide our logs telemetry, uh, telemetry settings everything will go into this kernel so kernel, kernel is the one who knows about every single thing which is going to talk with each other second one is the memory so memory is uh, one, the one that allows to provide context to the user question so let's say you are doing a conversation with your user and he's asking he or she's asking some question based on the previous question so in that case we need to maintain some kind of context some kind of history so that we can help user to continue with his conversation and that's where memory comes into the picture so because of this plugin can recall because of memory feature plugins can recall past conversations and these memory can be implemented in three different ways it could be like a key value pair you can even store it in a local file system or you can use with uh, like the semantic in memory which is for embeddings purpose the next one is the planner so planner is a function that takes a prompt and uh, returns an execution plan which we want to carry for our user's request so it will just take a prompt and will return you the plan which needs to be executed and we have different types of planner which we can choose from basic sequential action as well as the step wise so in the basic planner it's a very simple version and what it does is it chains the function or multiple functions together whereas in sequential one it is a more complex form of uh, basic planner and it works with multiple functions that are interconnected with their own input and output variable so every function will have their own input and output and sequential planner will take care of that coming on to the action planner so it just deals with a single function and the stepwise planner is executes uh, in a like step by step incremental fashion so one step will be executed then next step cannot start until and unless the previous uh, steps results are observed or grabbed so it will just go in a sequential kind of manner okay and the last uh, the next one here is the connectors so connector like i said it bridges the gap between the various components and the information we are exchanging so let's say you have your application you want to integrate some ai services through that then that can be done very easily using connectors so there is a huge list of predefined connectors which you can choose from and it keeps growing and the last one is the plugin so plugins are also known as skills and these are the set of functions consist of both native and the requests that are related to ai services so the if it like as i mentioned here it supports both semantic and native functions so if you are a c sharp developer i am sure you are going to enjoy this semantic kernel because uh, semantic kernel has c sharp as a first class citation to develop plugins but it doesn't mean that there is nothing for python developers or we can't use python of course we can use python and in fact we will be using python very heavily because python is the language which is very popular or we'll say very well known when it comes to ai stuff so and another reason is like if you will look at lot many code snippets blog articles or even the videos almost every or most of those are written in python so we don't want to rewrite those ai snippets 
which are already written in Python. And that's the reason semantic kernel is here. So using C sharp code, we will be simply calling those existing functions or the pre-written functions which are in Python. So nothing to worry here. There is something for C sharp developer. There is something for Python. And at some place, we will be clubbing these both together. So that's all I have for today and stay tuned for my next video in which I will be explaining you how can you set up the environment, how can you get started. And do let me know in comments how excited are you to know more about Semantic Kernel. Thanks for watching.